we are in the town of Beaver Lodge, which I'm guessing is why there's a giant beaver here. And what was the problem last night? The car's dead. Woo! Onward to Jasper! They are sold out for tonight. Jasper's off to a good start after a rocky start. In our last episode, we left Alaska and made the 1,200 mile drive back to mile zero of the Alaska Canada Highway. And today we say goodbye to British Columbia and hello to Alberta as we prepare to head south to our next bucket list destination. Wow! wow. Jasper National Park. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond. This summer, we took you along as we explored the great state of Alaska, and now we're on a road trip through Canada with our three RV pups, Piper, Ella, and Scout. Each week, we bring you along with us to explore unique things about every new state we visit. When one finds out there's a giant beaver on our route, one makes lunch to then have with the giant beaver. <laughs> And how random is that? We're in the town of Beaver Lodge, which I'm guessing is why there's a giant beaver here. It's a little picky table. This is the moment when we're going to realize that the town was actually named after a forest beaver and has nothing to do with beavers whatsoever. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be just about beavers. This beaver is from 2004 and it took about six months for them to raise the funds. A local entrepreneur wanted to help put Beaver Lodge on the map for something. And so in February of 2004, he started fundraising, and by July of 2004, this masterpiece was completed. That's pretty fast. I'd say so. I mean, I can't even imagine how long it took the beaver to really chew on that giant wood log that it's on. I learned all that from that placard that's over on the other side of the beaver. I was too busy eating my sandwich to learn anything about the beaver. Giant beaver was great and all, but I am more excited for our next stop just down the road. <laughs> I can see it from here. <laughs> That's what I'm excited about. Root beer float. Yes. And before you guys start throwing us some shade, we know it's an American company. But honest to God, A&W is supremely more popular in Canada than it is in the United States. They're everywhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Success. And some fries for good measure. Oh man. I haven't had a root beer float in a long time. Maybe we'll be having a lot of these too in Canada. What do you think? Yeah. Can I have some? I wanted to get two for this reason. For what reason, Kayla? So good. Mm -hmm. We are at a this is city park campground. Mm -hmm. well, with the exchange rate, it's $22 a night for water electric, uh, 30 amp, and there's a dump station on site. What is Piper and Ellen's eighth birthday? Birthday. <laughs> They are litter mates, so they have the same birthday. So we brought them all here to the dog park in Grand Prairie, Alberta. We're gonna have a little fun. Okay, let's go. All tangled up. This is great. It's one big fenced in area, but there's like a wooded tree line that kind of separates it, which is good for scout. <laughs> there's some big dogs over there. Good girl, come here, scout. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Hi, honey. Everybody had a very good time at the dog park, and Scout even played with a couple other dogs, which is a really big step for her. We're very proud of her. But now we are hungry, so we are celebrating Piper and Ella's birthday with a local chain. Um, or it's a Canadian chain. The Canadian chain is called uh, Ito Japan. It's like fast food Japanese. They have sushi, they have rice dishes, noodle dishes. Not bad at all. Um, the sushi is fresh and the teriyaki is pretty good. Yeah, they had this like bento box deal. So it was like, you get two of them with a bunch of sides and veggies and all just sushi. All right, the wonderful task of dumping is done. <laughs> it's not that bad. No, it's really not that bad. I do have to laugh though, look at this. The emergency meeting area is the dump station. 
a little odd. Uh, never seen that before. <laughs> so now we're heading into uh, Grand Prairie. And we have to do like all the life stuff. We have to go to a Costco, a grocery store, stock up because we are heading to Jasper National Park. All of our shopping is done through the magic of editing. It only took seconds. <laughs> oh, amazing. I wish. It is like six o'clock right now. Now Howard is finding our spot that we're staying for the night. Yeah, um, it is a riverside spot that supposedly has internet, uh, meaning like cell service, and it is really close to a burger and fry place. So what? Caitlin, I don't know. Failed to mention that when he told me he found this. We still have a couple hours to Jasper, so this will be the last stop before Jasper. Caitlin doesn't know this, but I've ordered and I'm surprising her with a surprise cheeseburger. There's a, a fry stand over here, right at the end of the campground. <laughs> surprise! Thank you! From the fry stand? Yep. Mm. Okay, so listen, I had to get her gluten-free buns. <laughs> So we're gonna do a bun transfer, but uh, it's a cheeseburger, yes. everything, and fries, and then a hot dog for me. Thank you. Okay. That's really good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I approve. Mm. <laughs> Got our snazzy new annual pass. And it's good for 12 months of all the national parks you can do in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good deal because actually um, they're kind of expensive here. Uh, what did we figure it out to be, Kaylin? So it's 20 bucks a day. For um, the two of us. For the two of us. Um, so for about seven days worth, or eight days worth, it pays for itself. Yeah. Woo, onward to Jasper. And it looks like we're going to start our adventure with Jasper National Park. This tour has everything included as we transition from park to park. So, wow. wow! Do you see the color of that Oh water? my gosh, and it's a cloudy day. Yeah. So our cheapest option for camping is the Overflow Campground, which is like right past Snaring Campground. It's about $12 US a night. $16.05 to be exact yeah. in Canadian, Canadian dollars. Yeah. But there is a big sign here that says the campground will be closed tomorrow. So I don't know if we really want to stay here for a night just to then have to move again. Kind of a bummer because this is so cheap in comparison to everywhere else in the park. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Whistler. So Whistler just reopened this year after being closed for, was it an entire season? Two years. Two years. So they did a bunch of renovations. It's the biggest campground in all of the Canadian national parks. Let's see what the finest campground in all of Canada is really like. If they have availability. They have a lot of availability. There were 60 spots online as of yesterday for tonight, so we shall see. Well, Kaylin, we get to go right back to where we were <laughs> because they are sold out for tonight. Um, that's amazing. They had 60 open spots yesterday, filled all of them. There's 700 spots at this campground. That's absolutely incredible. Anyway, so we're gonna do one night at Overflow and then two nights here at Whistler's. Whew, all right. But uh, she did tell us where we can park so that way we can go check out town because we don't want to just drive all the way back there again. Apparently where we can park the RV, there's an off-leash dog park. So maybe we can get the dog some activity real quick. Ooh. Yeah, check it out. That sounds pretty good. Color me impressed, but there is an enormous, highly fenced dog park right here. <laughs> Gone. Oh my God. Wow. We have the whole place to ourselves. Oh, so great. Oh, awesome. What a great start. I'm choosing to just forget all about the camp. Oh yeah, it's fine. I'm, I... I'm totally okay with it, Jasper. You have totally made up for it. <laughs> this is awesome. I don't see any of them. And this is what usually ends up happening at the park. Ella 
is done playing and will just sit with me. Piper will try to get her to play and then Scout will just run around. And that's about it. Puggles aren't really into much physical activity, right? Yeah. Oh, hi baby. I'm gonna try and get her to play. Brought the Kong. This is her very first toy. Scout, hey, look. Hey. Okay. Want this? <gasps> yeah, get it. <laughs> Solid. Go. Woo! <laughs> Go, Piper Turbo! We sufficiently tired out the pups. Everybody is napping. It is great. And we're heading to a pizza place now that apparently has Wi Fi. Yeah? Yeah, and it has great reviews. Yeah. And it has a gluten free pizza crust. Yeah. Well, good morning from Overflow. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is a great spot, actually. This is, ironically, where we originally stopped. So now we get to experience it. And it was actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, but Caitlin, what was the problem last night? Oh, so we're in a back in sight and you might turn this way and see something a little odd. Our tow vehicle is still hooked up in a back in sight, which is like impossible. But not if you're hiring Caitlin, the ultimate RVers. So we came out of the pizza place doing our work. We we're there till like 9.30 and I'm dealing with the dogs. Howard comes in he's like, the car's dead. And if you remember from many episodes ago, this happened when we were in the Yukon on our way to Alaska. But we have a brand new battery, so it shouldn't have happened. So anyway, the car was dead. We towed it over here about 15 minutes, but we couldn't unhook. All the sites here are back in sight which is a major problem when you have a dead vehicle and nothing to do with it. So we hilariously maneuvered it. Howard did a great job. I did a mediocre job helping. <laughs> and here we are. So. No, I think she did a great job. <laughs> Kaylin did a great job. There was a little bit of confusion about whether the wheel was straight or not. That was it. But uh, hat tip to this little charger that we have and the fact that with our uh, new batteries, we were able to literally charge another vehicle's batteries all night and it still didn't kill our batteries, which is amazing. We are going to go back over to the lot in Jasper, take the dogs to the dog park, and then go explore because this might be our one and only good weather day here in Jasper. All right, took the dogs to the dog park. They are nice and tired. The house is good. And we are off to explore. Take two. Hey, look, we're back in the RV. Why? Kaylin, why are we back in the RV? Because the wonderful thing about having an ancient car beater car so sometimes things break and it's happening a lot more now than before but our brakes are not working correctly that's right folks it goes all the way to the floor if you pump it it still doesn't build up enough pressure i mean that could be the master cylinder it could be i mean a, a number of different things point is i don't think it's safe to drive so we're just going to park it and tomorrow a mechanic will be open on because today is sunday and we're gonna try and get it fixed in town tomorrow. And that's what that means for our adventures today. Oh yeah. So we're gonna drive the RV around. Wow, this will be kind of like if we didn't have a tow vehicle. So you guys will get to experience what it's like to travel around Jasper in an RV. In an RV. Next week. It has completely just snapped off. The hits keep coming with our vehicle problem. We got a chip. But we finally get to see what Jasper is all about. And let's just say it's one of our new favorite places. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming Canadian adventures. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.